Hi, I'm Kyle. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. One of the most common questions we get here at WordStream is how do I structure my account? So today we're going to lay it out for you. Building a successful Google Ads account can be daunting. And sometimes you inherit a campaign so damaged that it's better to just start over. But with this guide, you'll be able to fix or build an account that truly works for your business. We'll cover the basics of building out a Google Ads account structure in five parts. The campaign level, the ad group level, keyword selection, ad copy, ad extensions. And once we're done, you'll have a beautiful campaign structure that looks like this, clean and organized. Let's get started. Google Ads campaign structure, campaign type and settings. The first thing you need to do is create campaigns that will lay a solid foundation for the rest of your account. This starts with choosing your campaign type. Take a good look at your business and ask yourself, what is your advertising goal? The right campaign type for your business depends on your answer. Next, it's time to consider your campaign settings. This means you have to consider things like location targeting and language targeting, and making sure they are consistent with how you are trying to reach your target audience. One of the biggest parts of the campaign level to set is your budget and your bid strategy. Okay, let's talk about how to set your campaign budget and bid strategy. First, you need to know how Google spends your money. You spend a daily budget and Google will spend relative to that daily budget. Sometimes it'll be a little over, sometimes it'll be a little under. It's important to think about your business's needs and consider, based on your estimated cost per click, how many clicks per day can your budget support? If you're looking for more detailed help with managing your budget, we'll also include a couple of additional resources in the description below. Choosing your bid strategy is a super important aspect of how your Google Ads campaigns will run. There are two bid strategies that you can choose from, automatic and manual. When you're at the campaign level, you'll choose which bidding strategy you want to use out of these two. If you're just starting out with a campaign, you may want to choose automatic bidding to get a handle on how much clicks will cost then switch back to manual once you have enough data. Manual bidding will give you more control from the start. You'll choose an amount you never want to pay more than for a click. This can be restrictive, but if you do your research, it can be a useful tool to give you control over your spending. Once we get to the ad group and keyword level, you'll choose your bids and customize them for specific keywords. More on bidding and the ad auction itself later. The ad group level. Let's start with the basics. What do ad groups accomplish? One level below the campaigns in your Google Ads account structure is ad groups. Ad groups do a couple of important things. They create structure within each campaign, they control keyword and ad association, and they are generally organized by theme. And how many ad groups should you have for each campaign? <laughs> Funny you ask. We're gonna tell you. There should be a max of seven to 10 ad groups per campaign, about 20 keywords per ad group, and two or three ads per ad group. Of course, there will be exceptions to these rules. But for most businesses, these are some solid guidelines to make sure your ad groups don't get bloated and hard to manage. At the ad group level, you will set your bids for specific campaigns. Next up, keyword selection. Keywords are the next level in the organizational hierarchy of your Google Ads account, and you'll select keywords to bid on for each ad group. You could rely on your instincts here, but we don't recommend it. It's definitely a better idea to use some kind of keyword planner to help you make sure you're bidding on keywords with actual search volume. We'll link some options below. The key to really great keyword research is intent. You want to choose keywords that have clear commercial intent, meaning that people who search using those terms are looking to buy something because a search shows intent to take an action on a product or service. Keywords with intent often include location, product details, brand names, the word cost, etc. Broad terms don't show intent and can have really low click-through and conversion rates and high CPAs. Keyword match types. Keyword match types are a way of defining how the keywords in your campaign can match up with the queries people search on Google. There are four keyword match types to choose from. Broad match. Your ads may show on searches that include misspellings, synonyms, related searches, and other relevant variations. It is the default match type Google will choose if you don't specify. Negative keywords. These stop your ads from showing for certain queries. Those you'd like to include as negatives are designated by a minus sign. Broad match modifier. This match type is slightly more restrictive. Your ad will only match when the search term includes words that you designate with a plus sign. 
but the words can be in any order. Phrase match. Ads may show on searches that match a phrase or close variations of that phrase, which may include additional words before or after. Phrase match is designated with quotation marks. Exact match. Ads may show on searches that match the exact term or are close to variations of that exact term. Close variants include searches for keywords with the same meaning as the exact keywords, regardless of spelling or grammar differences between the query and the keyword. Exact match is designated with brackets. So what's the best match type? Shocker. It depends on your account goals and budget. If you're working with a larger account and budget, broad match modifier is likely best. For a small to medium sized business, I would probably suggest phrase match. And with a super small budget, exact match is likely your best bet. Let's take a minute to review how the ad auction works. Your ad rank is determined by your max CPC bid multiplied by your quality score and your quality score is an estimate of the quality of your ads, keywords, and landing pages. Quality score is reported on a 1 to 10 scale. It includes expected click-through rate, ad relevance, landing page experience. Basically, the more relevant your ads and landing pages are to the user, the more likely you are to have higher ranking landing page experiences. Now, your ad rank determines your ad position and your cost per click. How much you pay is just one cent more than the ad rank of the person below you divided by your quality score. We can do a full video on the ad auction if that's something you might be interested in. Cool, so now let's talk about how you can optimize your bids at the keyword level. When using automatic bidding and trying to get clicks, use the maximize clicks bid strategy. Google will try to get as many clicks as possible out of your daily budget. But remember, implement a max CPC bid limit. Although you don't have control over your keyword level bids with this strategy, you can set an overall limit that you don't want Google to exceed for a single click. This is important in not blasting through your budget. When using the manual CPC bidding strategy, keep an eye on campaign performance as your account runs. If you find that one keyword or placement is particularly beneficial for your business, you can manually allocate spend there. And the same is true the other way. Let's talk ad copy. Now for the most visual component to your ads for your prospects, the ad copy. It's important to note that we're living in an expanded text ad or ETA world. ETAs are now the default ad type, and they're about twice as big as Google text ads used to be. A-B testing. It's so important to run tests on your ads so you can find the text and creative that resonates most with your audience. Two examples of A-B tests that would be worthwhile to use are keywords versus creativity tests. Those that test ads that are keyword centric versus ads that are creative and attention grabbing and price versus no price, including pricing information in the ad itself and omitting it. Ultimately, the main goal for your ad copy should be to drive conversions. A couple of tips, use self-selecting ad copy. As mentioned, including pricing info can help you reach your best audience and avoid clicks from non-buyers. Match your call to action to your landing page when the same CTA appears in your ad and on your landing page, people are in the right mindset to convert before you even pay for the click. The icing on the cake, ad extensions. Ad extensions are a foolproof way to make your ad more enticing. They garner high click-through rates because they provide more relevant information at no added cost to you. Types of ad extensions you can use. There are so many ad extensions available within Google and they always have new ones coming out or changing. It might be tempting to try out each new option, but remember, not all of them are going to be right for your account. Here are our top four favorite extensions. Site links, call out extensions, call extensions, and location extensions. Site links and call outs are almost universally applicable. Site links are clickable links to other pages on your site, more options for the searcher than just one landing page. But if you're using static lead capture landing pages, you may want to avoid these. Callouts are additional snippets of text that form an extra line of copy, but are not clickable. Call extensions and location extensions are a little more specific. Call extensions make it easy for mobile users to call you directly from the search engine results page, skipping the landing page entirely. Location extensions offer your physical businesses information, which is great for local businesses. Extensions allow your ads to provide a more direct path to conversion. Take up more real estate on the results page 
and improve your quality score by raising your click-through rate. They're really important to use in your ads. Don't skip them. Shall we review? Whether you're ready to build a brand new Google Ads account from scratch or want to overhaul a messy account you've just inherited, here are the main takeaways from what we've discussed. Number one, start with a strong foundation. Give your campaign structure and settings the attention that they deserve. Number two, ad groups are simply containers, but they're very important to control keyword and ad association. Number three, make your keywords work for you. Start with modified broad match keyword, two to three terms in each keyword that shows clear intent. Number four, write ad copy that sets you up for conversions and keeps on keeping on with the testing. And number five, remember, ad extensions are your friends. Choose wisely and don't start spending money until they're enabled. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Again, this is Kyle over here at WordStream. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe on our WordStream videos. We're always going to be making videos, always giving you guys quick tips and tricks on how you can make sure your Google ads are top performing. Thank you again, guys.